In this screencast, we're going to look at what we have to take into consideration in order to calculate the tension in a cable. So we're going to have a cable here that's under tension that holds this gate up. And of course, the gate wants to open because there's weight of the gate and there's the pressure of the water on the gate. So some notation, H will be the height of the water, theta will be the angle relative to the horizontal, and then first thing that we want to be aware of and keep in mind is that pressure is only a function of the water height, not a function of the angle of the gate. So the pressure here at the surface of the water will soon to be zero, so we're going to ignore the air pressure because the air pressure is going to be on both sides of the gate so it would cancel out when we're looking at forces that cause the gate to open. As we get deeper in the water, the pressure increases and it increases linearly with depth. The, the second important aspect that we want to keep in mind is that the force of the water is perpendicular to the surface of the gate. So that's how I've drawn the purple arrows to represent this is the force of the water and this is perpendicular to the surface and that's independent of what the angle of the gate is. It's going to always be perpendicular to the surface. Next, what we want to do is replace this distribution of forces along the gate with a resultant force. This resultant force should exert the same force on the gate as the forces at the different depths, and it should have the same moment as the integrated moments. This force is also perpendicular, so this force, FR, is equal to integral of the pressure and the area of the gate that is underwater. Now, we should note that as the angle theta gets smaller, then we have more gate underwater, so there's more force on the gate. Well, next thing we want to do is determine the location of this force so it has the same moment as distributive forces. And so if the length of the gate that's underwater is A1, we end up showing that this distance is one-third of A1. That is, the force acts at one-third of the height from the bottom. And then the final thing that we have to take into account is that the gate has some weight. That weight exerts a force vertically downward. And that's going to be at the center of the gate. Not the center that's underwater, but the center of the gate. So we're going to use that. And then, so the other thing we should keep in mind is the pressure is equal to the density of water, gravitational constant, and the height of the water where here H is equal to zero, and then height increases as we get deeper into the water. So we'll use that, and the next screencast we'll do the calculations to determine the value of FR and to show why the location is one-third of AI. But I'll give the answer here for FR. Rho G, B is the width of the gate, which we're going to use as one meter. Sine of theta, and then A1 squared all that divided by 2. 